Hey everyone. Uh, welcome to our OHS lecture series. Uh, today's lecture is about pain and pain management. I'm Michael. I'm one of the practitioners at Oriental Health Solutions and let's dive right in. All right, so pain management at home. Uh, the lecture is going to be two parts, understanding concepts of pain uh, and uh, abbreviated treatment strategies. All right, so discussing your pain. Um, the main thing you need to know is that pain is complicated. Um, it often takes a long time to understand the pain, uh, what's causing it, and uh, how to treat it. Um, so spend that time. Uh, different types of pain are caused by different causes. Um, different symptoms are from different causes, and depending on the cause, the treatment is going to be different. Um, the treatment strategy is going to be different. So it's important to understand what's going on with your pain so you know how to most appropriately treat your pain. Um, the most important things to look for are, uh, from a Chinese medicine perspective, the quality, location, duration, origin, severity. There are more qualities to pain. Um, and it's often helpful to get into uh, the nitty gritty and the details, um, but this is a good starting place. Um, the quality can be very diverse. Uh, it can be burning, stinging, sharp, dull, achy, uh, catching, in, like an impingement type pain, um, fixed, moving, wandering, referred. Uh, uh, how frequent is the pain? Is it every day, all the time? once a week with certain activities? Is it a very defined pain? It's very specific. I feel pain right here, or is it nebulose? Do I feel general pain coming from somewhere? Um, location, that's the same kind of issue. Uh, spend that time getting to know where your pain is because uh, sometimes it's very specific and the pain is right here and you can treat that specific pain. Uh, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it takes time to figure out where the pain is actually coming from, um, or if it's in a complex area like the shoulder or the neck, where there are a lot of different groups of muscles and nerves and blood vessels going in different directions. Um, there's a lot to investigate there. Um, duration, we're going to get into that a little bit more. And origin, um, is it from is your pain caused from activity, inactivity, a specific injury? Um, the treatment strategies are different depending on what initially caused the pain. Um, in general, these are some, uh, what some of those qualities mean. If your pain, uh, if there's a feeling of weakness with it, we often call it chi deficiency. Uh, in general, achy pain or a, a wandering pain is a chi stagnation type pain. A sharp fixed pain, we call a blood stagnation type pain. Um, and a burning sensation or stinging often is a nerve or blood vessel, either inflammation or impingement, something like that. Um, and none of these things are always 100%. They are, in general, it's a starting place to try to figure out what's going on with the pain. Um, location, uh, went over it a little bit, but pain can be deceiving. A lot of the times, you know, you think, oh, I have neck pain or I have shoulder pain, um, but it's coming from somewhere else or maybe where you're feeling it in your head, when you actually start to investigate, you'll find uh, the pain's not exactly where I thought it was. Um, duration. Uh, these uh, uh, duration of pain uh, is a good generalization to see what stage you're in. Um, if for injury specifically, if you have an acute injury, we we'll call it stage one. Um, once it's moved past the inflammation stage, uh, then we call it stage two. And the, uh, once it moves to a chronic injury, a chronic pain, um, then we call it stage three. Uh, the, uh, the majority of cases that I see are stage two and three, um, but I do see a lot of stage one, uh, particularly if it's a strain or a sprain. Um, and uh, the one thing I want to say right here is don't ice. Uh, uh, if you're in pain and you need to numb it up, ice is fine. Um, but in general, the ice is going to, the cold is going to restrict the circulation, it's gonna tighten the muscles, it's gonna tighten the connective tissue, and it's gonna slow down your healing process. You don't want it to be so inflamed that it's causing more damage. So in that case, if it's very swollen and painful, obviously ice it. Um, but if it's just uh, a little swollen and you're, 
you're not feeling like you need the ice, just leave it out. <clears throat> uh, again, origin, depending on the origin, treatment might be different. If your pain comes from not moving enough, part of this treatment strategy is going to be to work back up to moving more. Um, if the pain comes from overdoing it, I'm going to suggest that you slow it down. Uh, and so uh, that's just one example, but the cause of the pain is very important. The initial cause of the pain is very important. Um, severity, uh, if you've been to a hospital or clinic, you've likely seen this chart. Um, and this is important for understanding uh, from a practitioner's perspective how much we need to intervene to reduce your pain. Um, but for me as an acupuncturist, I find this most helpful over time with uh, uh, monitoring the progression of the pain. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that pain uh, levels are being reduced as quickly as possible so you can get back to normal. All injuries are different, but um, for me, this is a great measuring tool. And it can be for you at home as well. And what does all that together mean? Um, all those symptoms give us a pattern overall. And Chinese medicine, as many of you know, is um, treatment based on patterns. So if I see a pattern of pain that is associated, you have a lot of, for example, qi deficiency type uh, pain symptoms. Um, I'm gonna be looking for other signs of qi deficiency in your general health questions, digestive or sleep or something else. Um, and then that's, uh, if all those uh, symptoms give me a good pattern, then we know uh, how to treat uh, uh, your chi deficiency type pain by strengthening the chi and then relieving the symptom of pain as well. But getting at the root is very important. Um, several interventions for managing pain. Um, obviously, I'm an acupuncturist, so my favorite one is acupuncture. Um, but acupressure, massage, exercise, Herbal medicine, I use a lot internal medicine and external herbs, uh, liniments, cupping, gua sha. Um, there are so many modalities that you can use to treat pain. Everybody's pain is different. There's nothing wrong with uh, if one treatment strategy works better than the other. It's about figuring out what works. Um, and so we have to make sure we know uh, that we're having an effect. All right, so this is very important. Uh, uh, I think from the whole first part of the lecture talking about pain, um, the message I want you to take away is that the better you understand your pain, the more time you spend getting to know why you're in pain, um, the better you can do at managing your pain. Um, I strongly recommend this book if you're interested in pain management at home. Um, it's called Tooth from the Tiger's Mouth. Um, and here's a picture of the cover. And here's my copy. I also have a digital copy that I use to, um, uh, uh, as a reference for photos. Some of the photos are in this PowerPoint as well. Um, and this book is excellent. It has not only acupressure, but it also has suggested exercises. It has suggested movements. It has dietary and herbal suggestions. Obviously, if you're going to do anything with herbal medicine or acupuncture, uh, try to try to consult with an acupuncturist or herbalist first. Do not take herbs without knowing what they are, what they do, or where they come from. Um, but this book is really, really, really good resource. It's very inexpensive. I want to say it's thirteen dollars or something like that. All right. So managing pain at home. What's the takeaway from the first part? Pain is complicated. It's okay to try lots of things, but it is important to be patient um, and mindful. Uh, mindfulness meditation often helps. Often when treating pain, going to somebody who helps with hypnosis or therapy or uh, the mental aspect of managing pain is also very helpful. Um, the reason I put be patient here is the, uh, as far sometimes it can seem like magic. Uh, if we have the right cause and we have the right treatment strategy, you can immediately get some great relief. Um, and often uh, it takes longer than that. Often pain management takes some time, um, but with measurement, hopefully you can see whether or not uh, the strategy that you're choosing is helpful. All right, so this is a good jumping place for uh, some things you can try at home. Uh, acupressure helps very, very much uh, in a lot of types of pain. 
Um, but acupuncture points are not buttons. They're not, even though they can seem like magic, they are often uh, uh, used incorrectly. And so they're not effective. Um, but uh, you'll, the main thing when you're treating yourself is to test and see whether that is working. Um, okay, and again, these images I pulled from the Tooth from the Tiger's Mouth um, book, and then the point selections that I'm choosing are actually uh, the ones that I use in practice that I find most helpful. And um, some of them are the same as in the book, but I've covered up their points and added my own because um, these are my treatment strategies. So uh, if you have a cheat deficiency type pain, you're feeling weak, the limb feels like it's not working properly, um, the pain is maybe achy or dull, but mostly the thing you're gonna notice is probably weakness or inability to use that limb the way you used to, maybe shaky, something like that. Um, then these are excellent points. These are two of the strongest chi strengthening points in the body. They're very famous, um, stomach 36 and large intestine 10. Um, and what you want to do with acupressure is once you have found the point, um, press down with direct pressure um, and uh, massage gently for one to two minutes. Um, Qi deficiency is the root for a lot of problems in Chinese medicine. And so um, often we'll use, almost anytime you go to get acupuncture, you're gonna be getting these points if you have Qi deficiency, no matter who you see. Um, if your pain is caused by Qi deficiency, they're also very helpful. Qi stagnation is the most common uh, cause for pain. Um, and these are the two most commonly used points, large intestine four, hugu, and liver three, um, they strongly move chi. So any chi stagnation type problem they help with also, which is irritability or um, uh, alternating uh, symptoms. I don't wanna to get too deep into it, but um, they're usually helpful for that achy pain that is maybe more fixed or moving, um, but is uh, not super severe or pinchy or stinging or burning. Um, this one is, uh, this combination I use a lot for head, neck pain, tooth pain, that kind of stuff. Those are often chi stagnation type pains. Um, this point, gallbladder 34, is the command point for muscles and tendons. Um, if you have a muscle or tendon injury um, that is not healing, uh, if you feel like the pain is very tight, it's hard to move because there's too much tension, gallbladder 34 works very well. There are a lot of other points that help relax muscles and tendons, but this is my favorite one. Um, it tends to work almost instantly sometimes. Uh, blood stagnation. So blood stagnation, uh, you'll be feeling more severe pain, fixed stabbing. Um, it can happen at any stage, but it's more common in the middle to late stages. If you've had an injury for a long time, there's often a blood stagnation component. Circulation hasn't been good to that area, so there's old blood that needs to be moved. Liver four and lung five are my uh, go-to. They typically work for the majority of blood stagnation type pain, um, but spleen 10 is also very helpful, um, especially I find more with um, athletic people. Um, if you're the type who has a chronic injury um, and you've been running your whole life or something, spleen 10 is often very helpful. Um, okay, so those are the acupressure points for the root causes that I use most commonly. Um, and now we're going to get into point prescriptions based on areas. So low back pain. Um, the points that I like for low back pain are called lingo and dabai. Um, they're on either side of large intestine four and the picture is kind of hard to tell, but if you can see my hand here, whoop, lingu is right here. It's the most common one for low back pain that I like to use and dabai is right there. Um, and they, uh, uh, work on the Taiyang channel. Uh, so, uh, I'm saying low back pain, but really anywhere on the back lingu or dabai can be pretty helpful. Um, ihikon is... Uh, uh, my favorite point prescription for back pain, any type of back pain, best for low back pain, um, but also helps with anything basically from the base of the neck all the way down to the heel. 
Needling Ihikon often releases it. Um, it's a combination of three points, sorry. Um, a point near bladder 39 or 40, it's in the back of your leg. A point near bladder 58 and a point near bladder 60. Um, uh, you'll often find a knot there. Just massage that knot out and then you'll see that that releases the connective tissue in the back often. Um, if you're having neck pain, locally massage tends to help a lot. People love neck massages. Um, uh, I like these areas a lot. Um, you want to feel up the base of your neck until you get to those kind of big knobby bones that stick out right there. Um, and those are bladder 10, gallbladder 20, on men. They're points all along the back and they can be really, really helpful to massage for one to two minutes to release the tension in the neck, especially if you work at a desk or something where your um, neck muscles are stretched and strained most of the time. Um, needling along the vertebrae can be very helpful. Uh, at the base of the vertebrae, um, there's a point called, uh, at the base of the neck, uh, at the level of uh, the first thoracic vertebrae, um, bladder, bladder 11 can be really helpful if there's a bone type pain. Uh, a lot of times people have like a stenosis or something like that. Um, I like to combine bladder 11 with small intestine 3, which is right here. Um, and those tend to help with spine problems. If your pain, neck pain is more on the side of the neck, right? Sometimes you're feeling tension through here, the, the SCM or the scalenes. Um, these are points to check for. Uh, I usually only pick one or two of them, um, but uh, look through here. These are extra points and some regular acupuncture points. So they have weird, n not weird, they have uh, um, non-number names. They have the Chinese names, um, but they say what they do usually in Chinese. Uh, uh, shoulder pain, very complicated. Um, this one is, uh, really difficult to treat sometimes. Um, but the first place to check is the rotator cuff. The majority of shoulder injuries have the rotator cuff at least involved. Um, and treating the rotator cuff, I often massage right on the shoulder blade, uh, uh, small intestine 11 area and uh, stomach 38. I'll massage stomach 38, which is midway down the shin while moving my arm through the difficult areas. I actually myself have a, a old rotator cuff injury. And the thing that works best for me is massage, uh, well, needle, uh, stomach 38, um, while I'm moving my arm and sometimes adding in acupoints on that arm on the local channels. Um, it's really important with shoulder pain to check all the ranges of motion because uh, there's a lot going on there. So that takes some extra time sometimes. Um, and then uh, topical treatment for pain is something that I use a lot. Um, personally and with patients, it helps a lot in managing pain, especially if it's musculoskeletal pain, and especially if it's uh, from uh, uh, the causes that we've been talking about, because these treatments are based on Chinese medicine causes. Um, my uh, number one, King, Tiger Balm. It works for the majority of m general muscle pain, aches, pains. Um, it is a very good herbal combination. It's, it's common. Uh, it's, you should be able to get it at your grocery store. It's very inexpensive. Small jars cost, you know, between five and twenty dollars, depending on where you get it and how expensive they, uh, how, how much they have inside of them of their active ingredients. Um, Tiger Balm is amazing. I can't praise it enough. It's, it's always the first one to try if you're just a little bit achy. Um, it also works for itchiness on bug bites, just as a, a fun little bonus. Um, the tooth from the tiger's mouth popicles are uh, from the man who wrote this book. Uh, he worked with a company and they they actually produce a lot of the topicals that they were having you make at home in this book. Um, so I use a lot of those. They work really great. Um, CBD Clinic is a company that is the best analgesic on the market um, that I have found. Uh, uh, it works super well um, for pain 
from exercise or overuse or middle to late stage injuries. Um, it's extremely expensive as are many CBD products. Um, this is basically the strongest tiger balm you can get or icy hot, but it also has CBD in it. Um, and personally, uh, I love it. Um, so here are those two from the tiger's mouth topicals. I mostly use the ointments and the balms. And when people need to take internal herbs, I will mix up a custom uh, herbal tea for them. Uh, uh, CBD clinic, this is what they look like. Very expensive. That's that level five bottle in the front, I want to say is 90 or or $100. And it is a couple of ounces. Um, but it, if you're in a lot of pain, uh, it works very, very well. Um, and then internal herbs. And so often uh, taking internal herbs, because they also work on these same patterns of chi deficiency, chi stagnation, blood stagnation, um, they can be very helpful for managing pain. Um, some of the other causes that we didn't talk about today are external causes like damp retention or heat or something like that. Um, internal herbs work very, very well. Um, you do not want to take internal medicine, herbal medicine, um, if you have not had a consultation with somebody who knows how to use that medicine properly. Um, so uh, you may see something online, the pain management special herb on amazon.com. Um, don't get that. Um, that can be dangerous. It can be inappropriate. It can be ineffective. Um, and it can be counterfeit. There's a problem with herbal uh, medicine counterfeits. So just be safe, use your uh, good judgment and consult with a practitioner before you take any internal medicine. Um, and we offer that. So if you have any specific questions uh, and uh, want to get with one of us, um, please email our office or give us a call. Um, and uh, will help you come up with strategies to manage your pain. Um, hopefully this crisis will be over soon and we'll be able to see people for acupuncture appointments. Um, but until then, stay safe. I hope this lecture has been helpful and that you are able to see some, uh, uh, get some ideas about managing your pain at home, have some things to try. Um, and if you need anything extra, we're here for you. So stay safe, stay home, and hopefully we'll see you soon. All right.